Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be looking at the FRSky GPS Advanced sensor. FRSky has updated all of their sensors to the Advanced line which adds FBUS support. What's FBUS? Uh, FBUS is uh, a new name for FPort 2. FPort is SBUS plus SPort, so that's SBUS radio control plus SPort uh, telemetry input. So radio control plus telemetry input all on one line uh, now called FBUS. Now with FBUS you can daisy chain sensors one to the other and you can also uh, daisy chain uh, servos or compatible servos. Uh, you can run them all on the same signal line and they all know what they have to do and uh, they all send the correct information back to the radio. In the packet we also get a connection cable, that's mail to mail, a uh, little QR code card, here's the little bag it comes in and uh, we'll go and have a look at the website and uh, see what else is available via the website. So here's a few pictures of the sensor. FR Sky has advanced the performance and capability of the original sensor line resulting in development of the new advanced series sensors. All advanced sensors fully support FBUS protocol also still S-Port compatible. And they're also saying the GPS sensor provides accurate time synchronization with GPS satellites, working with the integrated auto adjust from GPS function in the ethos system. So that keeps the radio time uh, synchronized with the GPS time. So it's all very accurate. Uh, so let's have a look at specifications. Here's the dimensions, weight 11 grams, uh, voltage 4 to 10 volts, current draw 40 milliamps at 5 volts, uh, data rate 10 hertz, 30 seconds cold start. You do have to be aware that uh, GPS sensors do sometimes take quite a while to acquire satellites, satellites in a new area, so you just have to be patient sometimes. Speed, accuracy approximately 0.1 meter per second, and position accuracy approximately 2.5 meters CEP compatible with FBUS and SPORT protocol. Now the downloads page, you should always have a look at the downloads page of course. First of all is the manual. Let's have a quick look at the manual. No, we'll, we'll have a look at that later on. Uh, download the manual, there's a little bit more information in there and firmware uh, and uh, you can you, you update to the latest firmware if you need to. So here's the manual, shows the connections. You just have, uh, there's two, two sets of pins uh, in and out basically, SPORT voltage in and ground and as I said you can daisy chain uh, one sensor to the other and also uh, compatible servos as well. And here's, a, here's an important note, uh, there is an upside and a downside. The upside with, which has the antenna on it is the opposite side to the label. Uh, people often make that mistake and wonder why they're not getting satellites. And the LED status indicator, there's a blue flashing LED, slow flashing means you're on S-Port and quick flashing means you're on F-Bus. And they also say uh, make sure you've got the polarity correct too. Um, and I think maybe in the past I've actually fried one of these by collect connecting the, the polarity around the wrong way. So that's important. They're saying FR Sky is not responsible for any damage caused by wrong polarity connection. So that could be a problem. Be aware of it. So here's the GPS advanced sensor and you can see it has a green LED, not blue as I said and you have signal, voltage and ground, two sets of pins so that you can daisy chain sensors together and uh, importantly the other side is the way that has to be facing up because that's the uh, antenna there. I'm going to demonstrate it using an Archer GR8 on FBUS and using Ethos on the Tandem X20 radio. So let's connect him up. This is the S port connection there Plug it in, give it some power. Got a fast flashing light on the GPS. I think that also means that it hasn't acquired satellites yet, but fast flashing light is F bus. Green light on the Archer, that's bound. And we're on the radio as well. Now I'll move the receiver a little bit further away from the radio so we don't get swamped. So what we're going to do is uh, Discover new sensors on this model. Make sure the model is on FBUS. So let's go to model uh, and RF system. We're on access, internal module. 
Uh, we've, had, we've got the GR8 receiver, which also has a variometer or a barometer built in, so we're going to get uh, vertical speed and altitude from the barometer as well as the GPS. Uh, so let's go to Set, Options on the receiver. Uh, telemetry port, we choose FBUS. As long as we're using the latest firmware for the receiver, we'll get FBUS as the option. So you've got S port, F port, and F port 2 or FBUS. So that's good. Now we'll go to telemetry and we'll discover new sensors and we're finding uh, all of the receiver telemetry and also the GPS telemetry as well. So we've got GPS speed, GPS coordinates, GPS clock and GPS altitude. Uh, they're not showing anything at the moment because uh, we need to acquire satellites first so I'd have to put the sensor outside for a little while. We'll do that in a minute. But now that we've acquired these telemetry items, we can actually display them on the screen. I've set up a second screen, uh, which has four widgets. So let's set up widgets, configure widget. The widget will be show a value, and we will choose telemetry values. And let's have uh, GPS coordinates. Set up the next one. More telemetry from the GPS, GPS altitude, GPS speed, and for the final one what I want is uh, distance to home. And to do distance to home we need to create a calculated sensor. Uh, distance is one of the choices there. And you just have to tell it which GPS source, GPS, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Now that we've created, created that distance sensor we can add that on the screen and you, of course you can have these called out too if you want to telemetry and there's a distance the uh, extra sensor that we've created so now if we acquire enough satellites we'll actually get all this information on the screen we can also log all of this stuff as well uh, to log we need to set up a special function uh, and special function is write logs, so choose write logs from the list and enable. Choose whichever switch you want to start the logs, or you can have it going all the time if you want to. Um, I've tied it to my throttle cut throttle switch, active. which is the SC switch not in the back position, basically. Throttle active. So when I activate the throttle, it's also doing the logs. And you can also make that global if you want to, and you can also uh, choose the write interval. Uh, you can have it once every second, once any half, every half second. I'll have it once every, uh, what maybe, just do it once every second. Uh, that way we won't get too much information. Oh, actually, you can actually see on the on the top there. Throttle active. You get a little red recording dot there to show that the logs are being recorded uh, when the uh, switch is on. There you go. So ready to go. I put the GPS sensor outside, so uh, it should now be looking for satellites and. And we should get the information popping up on the screen when we have enough satellites. There we go. Uh, so that didn't take too long. What we need to do now is pop it in a plane, take it out for a fly and uh, check out the logs. I've mounted the GPS sensor up on the Bixler here. I've got my antenna facing up. I've got an absolute gale out there, uh, over 20 knots. So this is going to be a bit exciting. Uh, but anyway, let's fire it up and get into it. Okay, I've just tested it. We are going to be able to fly. We have uh, satellites acquired. Pretty wild. So let's just get up there. We've got distance, speed and altitude all working properly. That's cool. Let's get a bit of movement going so we can get a log. It's wild and windy. 20 knots. Bixler's handing it nicely.
away, we're recording a log and we'll be able to have a look at what we can show. Ethos doesn't really have a log view at the moment, so we can view it in uh, OpenTX. Not too sure about the GPS track yet on Google Earth. I, I, I'm sure it's possible, but uh, we have to convert the uh, log file somehow. But uh, if I can work it out, I'll show you. If not, um, at least it's recording the, the uh, latitude and longitude. But we're just building up a log. Hopefully you can see on the screen what it's showing. Not even using the motor, just sloping all the way out there. You can just keep going. 100 metres. Altitude down below what I am here. Okay, let's come back. Bit of speed. Do we have speed on here? Maybe we don't. Oh yeah, we do. Struggling to make it forward. This is cool. Gonna get up fairly high now. 30 metres, 68 metres out in front. Speed coming back. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, I'm enjoying this. Let's bring it in to land now. And we're down. Alright, so there we go. You can see all the stuff on the screen. Let's go and have a look at the log. Now the log file is uh, recorded in the log folder on the SD card of your tandem radio. There it is there, I've dragged it out and uh, we can't view that in ethos. I'm sure we will be able to eventually when they get round to uh, coding that, but uh, OpenTX will view the log file. So if we just open log file, find that log file that we just downloaded. There it is there and open it. Now we can have a look at things like uh, GPS speed in knots, got up to 60 knots on the way back from being at the front. Uh, GPS altitude, we got up to, what was that? Yeah, got up to about 35 metres there and distance furthest away is about 106, 107 metres. In OpenTX with their log files, you can just click on this little uh, blue icon down here and, and it will open up Google Earth and show your track in Google Earth but uh, it doesn't quite work. Uh, it's a bit of a mismatch with the files there but I'm sure we are to do it eventually. So that is the FR Sky uh, GPS Advanced Sensor. So a pretty useful sensor if you don't have a flight control board uh, with a GPS attached to it you can attach this straight to your FR Sky receiver and record uh, latitude and longitude. GPS altitude, GPS ground speed, and uh, distance from home. Thanks for watching.